you're poor and a person of color, you're much more likely to be fucked over. There's something wrong with policing. People between the ages of 18 and 34, they did not experience the New York of 1990 when the city was going to hell in a handbasket. The problem with broken windows, cops overtly police in different ways depending on who you are. They ticket and they arrest people who have little or no ability politically to push back. It's fucked up and it demeans us as a city, it demeans us as a country. Many people are afraid to speak up, but I'm so happy that Bob has not been one of them. I'm Bob Ganji. I'm the director of PROP, the Police Reform Organizing Project. We focus on exposing abusive and discriminatory police practices. Robert Ganji is a longtime critic of Broken Windows. Broken Windows is a philosophy. It's been translated into a form of policing that's supplied by the NYPD. The notion is if the government takes steps to prevent low-level infractions, like graffiti, jaywalking, drinking a beer on your stoop, it's going to represent an effective strategy at curbing serious crime, like rape and homicide and armed robbery. It's a theory that's never been proven. It targets low-income people of color. The powers that be should stop it. You have to educate these families. They need to learn core values. I think that actually helps, that whole broken window effect. If you stop the person from drinking on the curb, well, maybe you'll stop them going into selling drugs. One of our more successful actions, we went into Park Slope and we gave out mock summonses to white people who were riding a bike on the sidewalk, jaywalking. <laughs> But it's just those kind of infractions that the police regularly harass, ticket, even arrest people of color for. Well, you're going to see 500 people doing what I just did. All of this kind of falls under the umbrella of broken windows. Police, have you ever heard of broken windows? Uh, no. Broken windows is a policy that comes from on top. It's the pressure from Bratton, from the borough commanders, from precinct commanders for cops to make their numbers. So this is East Harlem, and I would say this is an area where you're today seeing a lot of the issues around broken windows policing play out. Good evening, everybody. My name is Colin Berkeley. I'm a retired New York City detective. The broken windows theory, depending on how you use it, is a valuable tool. You don't use it to abuse it. We as communities of color have become so accustomed to having officers be a part of our daily life. What I would push people to think about are to remove the police from our neighborhoods altogether. Not have cops in the community, remove them from the community. That's not gonna help. That's not what he said. That's not what he said. If you don't have one of these, these police are gonna violate your rights. You better get educated. Just because you're black or Hispanic, let me tell y'all right now, some of the most racist officers out there are black and Hispanic. Don't get it twisted, all right? And there are some good white officers out there, but your own kind can treat you the worst. You're under surveillance all the time. We need less officers because it is expensive, and this is money that we can be utilizing in our neighborhoods. I think that we deserve better police, and the quota and broken window is a reason for the abuse. Anybody who lives in the project or in the community is uh, savages. Look at those savages. I told them, you know, my mom is a savage because she lives in one of those apartments. Two Latino men were allegedly arrested for manspreading. A young African-American woman, the officer charged her with being in a park after dusk. The squeegee pests, we're not being overrun. Those will be taken care of very, very quickly. because there's no mainstream politician who will support what I just laid out. Because essentially what I just laid out would result in a significant reduction in the number of people who work for the police department. I completely disagree with what you're saying. Because broken windows does work. A couple of weeks ago, some guy had his feet up on a train mm -hmm. and the cops went up to him and they questioned him and guess what he turned out to be? A murderer. So, so he was a, he was a guy cop, but let me finish, the cops a arrest, a cops arrest literally hundreds of thousands of people for things like having a foot on the subway seat because one of those arrests caught someone who had a no. serious 
Okay. Had a serious criminal history? No. Why, no, does, no, why aren't the cops doing sufficiently good police work so they catch that guy? You, you blatantly lied when you said white folks don't get stopped by open containers. I got four open containers right in front of my dorm last year from, for having a red cup with beer in it. Did you say that I lied? Yes, you did, right over there. I said, for the most part, these offenses have been decriminalized in white communities, and that's true. But how the, you did say that? You also said that. You can't define the white community and the black community. Yeah, everybody, you everybody, you everybody, can. No, you can. everybody, everybody, listen, everybody listen, lives, listen. lives everywhere. It's, it's obvious if you walk into a community yeah. where all you see are black people, it's a black community. Even though white people may live there, for the most part, it is a black community. You can define that. I feel like at this point, you're just arguing to argue. Whether it was corrupt, right? Whether it's politicians who made these decisions, but they were elected in a democratic process, right? So essentially, those laws were created by the community, if we want to look at it, like, by the book. I couldn't come up with a good follow-up to the Park Slope similar action. You could also do SantaCon. The crazy Santa Claus people? Yeah, everybody dresses up as Santa and they get drunk and they're awful. <laughs> well, if somebody, if one of our people got hurt, it could help us politically. Cops overtly police in different ways depending on who you are, where you come from. So, I mean, look at this guy. He just thinks he could just walk wherever he wants to. And this is not just on SantaCon. This is like... If you ever been to Lower East Side, like on the weekends, it's the same crowd. It's the same privileged crowd. I mean, all these people are publicly intoxicated. Public drunkenness? Are you kind of like? That's not illegal in New York. Oh, okay, it's not. You, you could just be wasted on the street and. Yeah. Okay. What about like uh, like paper bag, open containers? Is that? That's not illegal. In New York. It's not illegal. No. So you're not cracking down on that at all. Okay, thank you. They can do what they want. They can do whatever they want. You can't help but feel cynical about all this shit because, you know, why should I respect this law? Why should I respect any of these laws if they're not even enforced fairly? We enforce the law. We are not targeting communities of color. We are targeting behavior. They're there to make sure you, don't, you stay in line, you don't do anything wrong, that you don't violate anybody else's rights. And that's what their jobs are. They're not there to please you. They're there to enforce the laws. They have no love for cops out here. And maybe people have to be cynical and distrustful of the police because of the way that the police have been designed to be. Maybe there is no happy ending here. Maybe the goal shouldn't be trusting police. Maybe it should just be finding ways to not need police as much. If the community doesn't believe in the law, the politicians should pass a legislature. Get rid of the law. One of the things that I've been talking to people about is running a candidate. I mean, we're talking about fundamental change. Stop broken windows, stop the quota system. Reallocated resources, the billions and billions of dollars that go to the police department now, to other government agencies and other government services. We'd have a better city, we'd have more and more people leading better quality of life, more and more people getting better education, getting better health care. Everyone should be able to experience that. We speak for those who cannot speak for themselves. Animals do not have a voice. The only voice they can have is through the people who care for them.